Welcome to section 5.1.1, exploring the area model. In this unit we're going to be using the algebra tiles to start investigating what and how we're going to multiply variables. Now some of you already know that. Uh, some of you will know that x times x is x squared, x times y is xy, x, I'm sorry, y times y times y is y to the third. And so, what is this area model and how do we use it to multiply expressions? Let's try to relate to something we kind of already know. Okay, in regular multiplication, the kind you've learned since whenever they taught you that, 3 times 6 equals 18. Well, there's another way that we can show that 3 times 6 equals 18. We call it the area model. And by that, it's making rectangles out of it. And if I make a rectangle that is three tall or three wide and six long, it will have 18 tiles in it. So that we can see we can get the factors three and six, what we're multiplying, and we can get the area of the triangle or the and, not triangle, rectangle, or what, uh, what we get when we multiply. So they're very closely connected. I want you to start thinking about that because what will it mean later on if we say we have an area and imagine that's a rectangle we say this side is x plus 2 and this side is x plus 3. What is this area going to be? And so we start out with a problem where they're trying to get us used to this and so in problem one they tell you the teacher is going to give you these tiles and they want you to find the area but first they want you to make a rectangle so a couple of things I want to give you as rules of multiplying if you will or putting these pieces together if this is a game I want you to think of these pieces in the dimensions we've talked about this is the X piece. It is X long and it's one tall. If you don't remember that, video 2.0.0 goes over the names and the dimensions. Anyway, I can connect pieces and put them next to each other if they have the same dimension where I'm connecting them. For example, I can connect this one piece to this X piece on this side because both of them have a dimension of one on that side but I can't connect them like this. Matter of fact, I can't even take a bunch of these ones and line them up against the edge here because if I do, even though it looks close, um, I'm not allowed to do that because I, I want to make sure that the pieces match. I can match up, for example, this side of the X piece with the X squared piece because there are two dimensions on this side and this side are both X. But I can't line them up this way. Now, one of the strategies that we're going to use when creating these rectangles is to start by putting the larger piece down in the corner. Okay, And as I work with this, let's see, I, I'm not really allowed to connect these this way and it's going to be harder to make a rectangle that way anyway. But I can connect them like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by putting all of these pieces, starting with the biggest piece, putting the other piece. Let's see, where can I attach my ones? I can attach my ones to the ends of these x's because those are the right dimension. But I can't put them on the x squared. So I'm just going to put this like right here. I can see that I don't have a rectangle. And I can also see that I need something here for these ones to connect with, because that's almost a rectangle. So if I put this right here, then I have to move that one. Looks a lot better. I've almost got a rectangle. Let's try once again, because we build around that x squared. Usually will be the fastest way to get this done. And if I move that there, I now have a rectangle. And one of the things 
that you will see about this rectangle is the x squared is usually over in this corner, my x's are around it, and uh, my units are usually up here. It's kind of like filling in the big pieces and then the smaller pieces around it. Usually that works quite well. And so what this is, is if we go back to what we did before, what's inside here is the area. So let's write what the area is for this. Remember, I can only combine pieces that are the same. So how many x squareds do I have? I have one x squared, and mathematicians usually don't write the one on the leading one on there. And then I have six x's. I know you'll be tempted if you haven't done this in a while to add those together by combining them, but they will not combine because they're not the same piece. And then plus eight. This right now we're gonna call the area, it'll also be called later in this lesson, the area as a sum, because I'm adding all these pieces together. Now I wanna find out, just like here, what did I multiply by to get that area? We call those factors. We can also call it a product because it's two things being multiplied. Like here I'd be multiplying x plus 2 times x plus 3. And those parentheses tell me that I'm multiplying. So let's look at this. And I'm going to draw a little frame around it because the inside of the frame is the area. And the outside is just me trying to figure out what the dimensions are, kind of the perimeter on this side and the perimeter on that side. Not the whole perimeter, just this side and that side. Okay, so I look here and I say, what is the dimension of this tile from here to here? Basically this side of this tile. I remember from my chart that I did in 2.0.0 that this has a dimension of x tall this has a dimension of one tall, and this has a dimension of one tall. And so this side, we're going to add these together. This side is going to be x plus 2. Let's look at this side. This tile's edge is x. This tile's edge is 1. Another 1. Another 1. Another 1. So this side is going to be x plus so I can write this as the product x plus 2 times x plus 4. Okay, We will later write this as the area of the product. Also notice that when I have put this together, I've made sure this will help you see the pattern later on when we're doing some other things. The cracks or the lines between my tiles go all the way through my rectangle. So if I start here, nothing will get in the way. I'm going to show you how it might be done that it would still look right to you, but wouldn't do. All I've done is I've just moved those around. I can see now I still have a rectangle, but if I come through, this isn't going to line up properly. It's going to have to stop here because it can't go through that. So make sure that as you're building your rectangle to remember that those need to go straight across and straight up and down with nothing in the way. Okay, now we've got a couple of other ones. See if I can get these pretty quick. Here is uh, question two. And they give us this in the problem. They already give us the area, 6x plus 15. So I'm going to start by putting them up here. And I am running low on time, so I'm watching. And that doesn't work. And so I'm going to try something. I don't have any big pieces. But I look here, this is kind of 3 and that's kind of 3. I wonder what would happen if I took and put these right here like this and then put those right there. I haven't need, made it any neater yet, but they go straight up and down. They go straight side to side. And I'm going to draw my frame. This is 1, 1, 1. So one of my sides is 3. And this is going to be x, x, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Or x, 2x plus... Five. Good luck.